may be seated in God's presence. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Today, we're going to give you a, some of y'all want a Christmas message, I know. So I'm going to give you one. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> we're going to give you a Christmas teaching. And today's message is titled, Seven Lies About Christmas. <laughs> Say that with me. Say seven lies. Seven lies. About Christmas. About Christmas. You don't remember anything else, you're going to know the pastor talks to you about seven lies about Christmas. Well, I don't know what the seven were, but I, I, that's what the pastor's message was. All right. Turn with me to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, and we're going to start with verse 9. Mark chapter 7, verse 9, and it says, And he said unto them, this is talk, Jesus talking to the Pharisees who were criticizing his disciples for not washing their hands before they eat. For full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. Praise God. Amen. They rejected the commandment of God that they may keep their own tradition. Jump down to verse 13, and it says, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Now, I know somebody's saying, well, what kind of a passage is that for a Christmas message, Pastor? I mean, shouldn't you have turned to Luke chapter 2 and talked about the birth of Jesus Christ or Matthew chapter 1? Yeah, maybe. But that's the problem. Quite often we read those scriptures from the viewpoint of tradition, and those scriptures have no effect, no power with us, because they just sound like nice little stories. Praise God. You see the pictures. Uh, you got baby Jesus sitting in this little manger, and you got this nice bright glow around him, and the animals are around him. And Mary and, 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 um, and Joseph are there. And you see three wise men with gifts, praise God. And you see um, some shepherds there. And it's all beautiful, praise the Lord. And the world loves that. You got people out there in the world who put those little nice little things out there in their backyard. Right along with the statue of Santa Claus. Well, that's because these things are nothing more than tradition to a lot of us. And so we need to break tradition if we're going to live and serve God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, it's important for you to know your Bible over the traditions of men. And for me, Christmas is the best time to do it. Listen, I would, we were, me and some other pastors were sitting in this, in this particular church this past Monday praying. And as I was praying and just talking to the Lord, this message came to me. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm giving you what the Lord told me to tell you. Praise to God. Amen. Um, but traditions, as you can see from verse 13, it makes God's word ineffective in our lives. And because it, the, the traditions make God's word ineffective, we don't experience the power of God's word. And this is especially true concerning the incarnation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. We, we sing the songs, but we don't know what they mean. We sing Silent Night, Holy Night. You know, we don't know what they mean. Praise God. We don't even pay attention to the words. I pay attention to the words. Praise the Lord. And, um, and some of those, those songs, are, some Christmas songs are very powerful. But to many of us, they're just traditional songs that we sing at this particular time of the year. So we need to deal with seven lies about Christmas. Say seven lies, seven lies. About, Christmas. about Christmas. All right. The first lie. Before I ask, now, if you've been in this church and you've heard and you already know what I'm going to say about this particular thing, I don't want you to say anything. I just want those who haven't been here and have never heard me talk about this. How many wise men? came to visit Jesus. 
Many. How many wise men? I, I said don't say it. Thank you. Anybody got an answer? If you didn't hear what my wife said? <laughs> no one, how many? Three. Three? That is the traditional saying. And no one, you are one in here who's never going to forget this lesson. <laughs> The first law I'm dealing with is that three wise men came to Jesus when he was a baby and gave him gifts. That's not true. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 2. See, if you don't, if you listen to what people say, if you watch the cartoons on TV, the Christmas cartoons and all that stuff, you will, and you don't read your Bible, you won't know. Praise God. You'll believe what somebody else says about the three wise men. And this is important. I'm going to tell you why this is important in a moment. But let's look at Matthew chapter 2. Look at verses 1 and 2. It says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came how many wise men? Doesn't say, does it? You don't see a number there, do you? It says, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him. Praise God. Amen. Now jump down to um, verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privily called the, how many wise men? Wise men. Doesn't give a number, does it? Huh? Does it give a number here? No. Are y'all reading your Bibles? Maybe y'all got a different translation than me. Anybody got a different translation than the King James? Who has a different translation than the King James? Lift your hand up. Anybody? How many, in your, in your translation of the Bible, how many wise men does it say it has? How many wise men are there? No. Doesn't tell, don't give a number? Even in your translation, maybe the King James is wrong. I've known it to be wrong before. Nobody has a number of wise men. Oh, come on now. All right. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently when that time the star appeared. Praise God. Amen. Now, maybe I might be wrong. Maybe I'm just not looking far enough. So let's jump down to verse 16. I looked this up on, 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 in my computer. So I wanted to see, uh, make sure that I'm not wrong when I say this. So maybe 16 might, be, might prove me wrong. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the, how many wise men? No number. Y'all been going around all these years talking about there's been three wise men. Mm-mm-mm. Listen to me. Why is this important? Because if you're not paying attention to your Bible and you're believing what somebody else says about what the Bible says, you don't know how people can mess you up. Praise God. Mm -hmm. This is why we are in a teaching ministry. This is why you are in a church that makes you open your Bible and read it for yourself. Glory to God. Amen. But I have heard pastors. Pastors. I'm not talking about just regular parishioners. I've heard pastors preach about the three wise men. I mean, I've sat there one time in a, serve, in a Christmas service, and, and, and a pastor, and a man, a man of God, I respect. He's a man of God, hallelujah. But we all, all of us men of God can mess up. But he sat there, and he said three wise men, and he lost me for the rest of the message. <laughs> well, that's not totally true. I did, pay, I did pay attention after a while, but the first thought that came to my mind was, man, pastor, are you reading your Bible? Praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. So this is important because if you don't know simple truths like this, if you are letting the world lead you in the wrong way, instead of reading your Bible for yourself, then you will always be misled in some of the most important matters of Scripture. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. We believe so much tradition, and we don't believe the Bible. And then when pastors start preaching about the Bible, y'all get mad at them. How dare you? They've been telling me all my life that's the way it's supposed to be. 
No, I'm going to tell you what the word of God says. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible, that, that, we don't know how many wise men there were. There could have been, there could have been only two. There could have been a hundred. Could have been 50. Could have been 35. Praise God. Amen. Now we know it was men. We know it was plural, so it couldn't have just been one. Mm -hmm. But we know that it couldn't have been, it, it wasn't, we don't know if it was limited. It could be three, but we don't know that. Amen. Amen. Maybe somebody got some information we don't know. You know, there's some, sometimes there's some historical documents that's, um, that, you know, helps to, helps you to understand certain things in the Bible more, some background commentaries and some documents, stuff like that. Maybe they found, they did some research and found that there was three, but I ain't seen no proof of it yet. Amen. So, why, this is important because you need to put Bible above tradition. Say, I need to, I need to. put Bible, put Bible. Above, tradition. above tradition. And that goes for especially those of you who sit there and reading, I mean, watching movies about Jesus and not reading your Bible about Jesus. I found almost, I don't think I've ever watched one movie, maybe with the exception of The Passion of Christ. And I didn't watch that one all the way because I couldn't stand all that blood and gore. Even though it, it was realistic and, it, and, and he and Mel Brooks, I mean Mel Gibson did a very good job of showing what our Lord went through, man. That's about the most accurate movie I think I've ever known of. Mo almost every other movie, so inaccurate. I mean, you got skinny looking Jesuses, <laughs> look like he's malnutrition. <laughs> I mean, I mean, in most of these movies, then you, then the, um, you got the, the, the movies about Moses that are so completely inaccurate. You know, we, we so, I, I try not to ruin it for people, but man, I sit there sometimes watching like the Prince of Egypt, that cartoon, real popular cartoon. But I sit there and watch it with people. I'm sitting there in the first, because I've read this book several times, I've read the story of Moses so, so many times, I sit there and I'm like, oh God, this is so inaccurate. It don't even make sense, praise God. So if you read, you're going to read your Bible, and you're going to find out that a lot of the movies you watch and you think you knew what was going on in the Bible are so completely wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, um, I remember when a man of God prophesied to me, you know, concerning this ministry, and one of the things he was telling me that the Lord told me to do was to read um, David Wilkerson's book, um, The Cross and the Switchblade. And, I, and the first thing that came to my mind was, I already watched the movie. What do I need to read that book for? But I obeyed anyway, and I read the book. I found out that the book is so different from the movie, praise God. Mm -hmm. I mean, the story of, of David Wilkerson and, and, and the growth of Teen Challenge and stuff like that, the movie didn't even come nowhere near to capture the, the heart and emotion of what happened um, between him and Nicky Cruz and, and, the, um, and, and those gangs and stuff. Praise, up, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So you can't rely on media. See, we're so media-minded, we're, we're so simple-minded that we just, you know, we'd rather watch a movie than to actually read a book. Pastor Mary was saying earlier, um, and it's true of, of, of just, I would say this as uh, far as a Christian, um, the normal Christian is concerned. I would, I'll change Pastor Mary's statement a little bit. I've heard the, that statement before. But I would say if you want to hide money from a Christian, put it in their Bible. <laughs> Because they, they won't read it. And they'll pick it up next Sunday. And, and only if, if, if you put that money where pastors about to have them turn to, that's the only way they'll, they'll, they'll oh, I got money here. It, here's a true, a true but sad story that, that relates to this. Um, 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 a young man was graduated from school. And so he thought his father was going to buy him a brand new car. And so when he graduated, his father said, come here, son, I got something wonderful for you. And the son says, he's, he's expecting that car. And so his father handed him the Bible, gave him a Bible. And he was mad. He, he went off on his dad. He hated his dad after that. And him and his dad never spoke again for years. He threw the Bible at him. And then they um, separated. Um, years later, his father died. And so he came to visit, and his mother said, here's the Bible your father was giving you. I want you to look inside of it. He opened it up, and there was the, enough money to buy him a brand new car. Mm -hmm. 
sitting in that Bible. Mad at his father all those years because he didn't want the Bible. Praise God. And that, but that's something even deeper than that. There's a deeper truth than that. If you open your Bible, you if you don't open your Bible, you are missing out on all the good things your heavenly Father has for you. Hallelujah. Amen. And that and so and that idea that there was only three wise men is indicative of how Christians are today because they most of y'all know the truth. Praise God. Mm -hmm. You've heard me say it almost every year. Let me ask you the quick quick question before we go to the next one. What kind of fruit did Adam and Eve that caused them to fall. What was the fruit? Anybody can tell me? Apple. You now know you better. know better. <laughs> now most people think it was an apple. You know apple. It might have been. It may have been. Yeah, we don't know. But the Bible never says it. Praise God. Amen. Who swallowed up Jonah? Can anybody tell me? Fish. <laughs> a fish. Was it a whale? Nope, because the Bible doesn't say it. Praise God. Mm -hmm. It could have been a shark for all we know. Amen. We don't know. Mm -hmm. See, we, we assumed that it was a whale, but scientists today tell us that whales are not fish. They are mammals. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so it, it could, it, it may have been a whale, but some, I, I read where, a science, where somebody did the scientific facts, and the whale's stomach doesn't have enough uh, room in it to swallow you up. That's some of y'all just been watching Pinocchio. <laughs> y'all been watching that Disney yeah. cartoon, Pinocchio, yeah. where um, Geppetto's inside the whale and he's building a fire and got, I mean, he's just chilling out watching TV and whatnot. I mean, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all ready, ready for the second lie? Amen. Only one person, my wife. Amen. amen. All right. That's, oh, y'all saying amen. She's the only one ready. No. <laughs> My daughter says I take things negatively too much. But anyway, <laughs> all right. Number two. This is a lie. There never was a Santa Claus. Do you know there actually was a Santa Claus? Yes. Praise God. There was a, a man named St. Nicholas. He was a 4th century bishop who was very kind. He was a very kind man and had a reputation for helping the poor and giving secret gifts to people who needed it, praise God. Amen. This is the fourth century uh, man that named Saint Nicholas that they later called Santa Claus. But um, Saint Nicholas was a he was a minister, he was a man of God, and he gave to the poor and he didn't broadcast it. Hallelujah. Amen. He gave secretly. Now, what has happened is tradition has taken over. Uh, and instead of what Satan has done was taking the focus off of Jesus Christ because this man gave in honor of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they're taking the focus off of Jesus Christ and put it on some guy who's overweight and, cl and claims that he climbs down chimneys. Now, even with my fat gut, I can't be climbing down no chimneys. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and I know I don't look nowhere near like the most Santa Claus that you see on TV and, and in the malls and stuff. Praise God. Uh, um, but they, but they um, took away the truth and planted a lie in the hearts of men. And now every, every year, instead of you teaching your children that the Lord is the one watching you to see whether you're naughty or nice, they think that Santa Claus has some crystal ball. And he's wanting to see if you're naughty or nice. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And if you're naughty, he puts coal in your stocking. If you're nice, then you'll get the toys that you want. That's a lie. Hallelujah. See, the, don't, don't mistake the truth. Don't, get, don't disparage the truth because of a lie. St. Nicholas is the truth. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And if people really honor this man of God, then we would start doing the things that he did on Christmas time. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't give gifts selfishly. We would be given to people who have needs and be helping them out and we would do it secretly without anybody but our Heavenly Father knowing about it. Glory to Jesus. But instead, we're telling our kids about Santa Claus. We're telling them about this guy, who, this magical guy who flies around on, on eight reindeer. I don't know how anybody would want to fly, fly behind eight reindeer. I think they smell bad. 
And if you're in the air, I'm sure it's going to smell. And come down some chimney. No, you need to tell your people about Jesus. Praise God. You need to tell your children about Jesus. If you're going to tell them a story about a man who honored Christmas, tell them about St. Nicholas. Tell them the truth. Hallelujah. Get on the internet. The internet is accessible. I got this information off the internet. All I did was do a Google search. St. Nicholas. And I, and, and I had a whole lot of information about him. So get on the internet, do some Google search, print it out, tell your kids about St. Nick, and get rid of the traditions. Now, should you buy your children gifts? Sure. Hallelujah. I even, I never taught my, did I ever talk, tell y'all that there was a Santa Claus? Nope. But did y'all get gifts? Yes. I didn't deprive my children of fun on Christmas. We bought them gifts. We did. We had fun. We ate, we, we ate, drank hot chocolate, watched cartoons together, let them play with their new gifts. Praise God. But I didn't. But they never heard the lie from me that there was a such thing as that Santa Claus gave them. No, I told them Jesus Christ gave your daddy the energy and the job to do this hard work, and that's why you got these gifts. Praise the Lord. All honor to Jesus. It's his day. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Third lie. Jesus was born on December 25th. That is not true. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, um, as, I stay, as I got written down here, the early church, they did not celebrate Jesus' birth. It was not until 440 A.D., that the church officially proclaimed December 25th as the uh, birth of Christ. But listen, this was not but this was not based on any evidence, any external or biblical evidence that Jesus was born on that particular day. Mm -hmm. It was because of a religious feast that happens usually on that day, praise God. Mm -hmm. It was the celebration of the sun god. See, what happened was Around that century, um, the Christians were being persecuted for, for centuries, praise the Lord. Um, and, and, you know, because we, we refused to worship anybody's God except our own. And, you know, most pagan nations, they don't like that. You, you better acknowledge that we are 20,000 gods that we have. Um, but Christians would only worship one God, and so they were called heathen, and they were persecuted. Well, one day, the emperor, Constantine, who was one of the persecutors, um, was about to go to war against another nation. And, and so he sees the sign in the sun, supposedly. He sees a sign of the cross in the sun, that, in, the, in the words that says, by this ye shall conquer. So he goes against the, this other nation, and he wins. So then he comes back, and he decides, now I'm going to be a Christian. And so all the Christian persecution stopped, but his, his pagan priests, they didn't like that. You know, they wanted to keep their idols. They wanted to keep doing what they were doing. So what Constantine did was change the whole thing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Instead of worshiping the sun, you worship Jesus Christ. Instead of worshiping these idols, we give you, you can start worshiping the saints. Amen. Mm -hmm. So then instead of... Um, the sun god's birthday being on the December 25th, we change it to Jesus Christ's birthday. And so that's why Jesus' birthday is supposedly now on the 25th of December, and that's why we celebrate it. So why is that important? Why is it important to tell you this? Because the Bible never focuses so much on the day when Jesus is born, praise God. It tells you, it gives you historical information about his birth and why he came. But the most important thing about Jesus coming to earth is John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the most important thing to know about why Jesus came into the world. Glory to God. Amen. We read from Luke chapter 2 this morning about the fact that the angel said that Jesus' purpose for coming here was 
peace on earth, goodwill towards men. We quote that every Christmas, but that's just tradition to us. If, if, if we really believe it, we'll act on it. Praise God. Amen. This morning we acted on it by praying for peace in the world. For, by praying for God's goodwill towards men. We need to act on the word of God instead of having traditional ideas about it. Instead of saying, okay, well, December 25th, so let's quote our favorite scripture from Luke chapter 2. No. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 says, Jesus came into the world to save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to remember why Jesus came. Not so much the day. Praise God. Amen. All right. But number four is connected to it. Lie number four. We should not celebrate Christmas because it is actually a pagan holiday. See, now, just because it's a pagan holiday, now, you need to know the truth that, is, that December 25th started off as a pagan holiday. But then some people carry it to the other extreme. Well, because it's a pagan holiday, I'm not about to celebrate it. That's just as stupid, praise God. <laughs> if it's a pagan holiday, I need to honor Jesus Christ more. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I don't know. What I don't do is sit there and say, well, today is Jesus' birthday. Happy birthday, Jesus. No. <laughs> I don't think, I don't do that. But what I do is I say, it's December 25th. I'm going to still have my traditions, but I'm not going to let my traditions have power over the truth. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to enjoy Christmas. I'm going to enjoy my family. I'm going to enjoy my friends. I'm going to enjoy my brothers and sisters in Christ who might celebrate it with me. But we don't want to go to the extremes, you know, like some of the pseudo-Christian cults like the Jehovah Witnesses. You know, they won't celebrate Christmas, birthday, or any of that kind of stuff. And it's annoying. One of the reasons why it's annoying is because they'll celebrate wedding anniversaries. I got into an argument, and this guy, he's a close friend of mine, he's a Jehovah Witness, but he, and me and him, we're, we, we're buddies. But I remember one time, I was just so annoyed with him. He's telling me, oh, he said, me and my wife, we celebrate our sixth um, wedding anniversary, and I bought this and bought that. And I don't know why it came out of my mouth. I said, man, you Jehovah's Witnesses are such hypocrites. He said, what? I said, y'all are hypocrites. I said, you won't celebrate birthdays, you won't celebrate holidays, but you're going to celebrate anniversaries. <laughs> oh, he got mad. He was storming. I mean, he was like, I'm going to kick your behind, man. <laughs> and we got into a heated argument. We was in a pizza shop, and me, man, me and him going off on each other. <laughs> we made up later, and, you know, we stood. Man, we're the best of buddies to this day. I'm, he, he's one of my friends, but I'm telling you, I'm trying to get him saved, praise God. <laughs> but, um, but the thing is, is that you don't go to the other extreme, hallelujah. hallelujah. Recognize the truth, but at the same time, if you know the truth, then you'll celebrate Jesus for the right reasons. Amen. You won't be sitting there saying, well, it's Jesus' birthday, so I need to do this and do that. No. You celebrate Jesus like you would celebrate him every day. Yeah. But you but you don't say, well, today is a pagan holiday, so I'm not celebrating him at all. That's stupid. But today is a pagan holiday. Well, I don't acknowledge the pagan holiday. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge that today is the day we set aside to celebrate the fact that my Savior came into the world. Praise God. Amen. I give it a little more extra attention today than I usually do. I should be doing it every day, but today I'm definitely going to give it some attention. Glory to Jesus. Amen. It's just like Easter. Easter is not necessarily the day that Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. It's a pagan holiday. It was, it was set aside to celebrate the um, false goddess Ishtar. On Easter, I, call, I don't even call it Easter, I call it Resurrection Day. That is, I, since I don't know the day that my Lord resurrected, I celebrate it on that day. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And, that, and that gives me power over the pagan lies. Praise Jesus. Amen. All right. Lie number five. Christmas is all about exchanging gifts. Now. <laughs> December 25th, as necessarily the day that Jesus was born, we still, like I said, we still recognize it that he is the reason for this season. Praise Amen. God. Amen. But we got to put the focus on him. Amen. Now, as I told y'all earlier, nothing wrong with buying gifts. Praise God. Ain't nothing wrong with it at all. Amen. Pastor is not so religious, 
that y'all can't buy me tons of gifts on, on Christmas, all right? Y'all, if y'all got my Lamborghini sitting outside, just give me the keys right now. Pa Pastor will say Merry Christmas to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's not about that, praise Jesus. Amen. If you say, now, and, and this is the honest to God truth. If you say that the money you pass I had for, I was going to buy you a Lamborghini, but the Lord told me to give it to, um, to charity, give it to the poor and help these poor people, that would mean a lot more to me than, than that Lamborghini. Glory to God. Amen. Now, if the Lord told you to buy me the Lamborghini, don't give it to the poor. <laughs> don't give it to the poor. <laughs> now, now, the Lord told me, all right, son, they gave you the Lamborghini. I told him to give you now. Sell that and give it up, give the money to the poor. Now, that's going to be tough. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to say, can I, route, can I drive it around for a little bit, Lord? <laughs> Right. So the problem with with the um, December 25th thing of exchanging gifts is that so many of y'all go into debt. You just go there, you use your credit cards because you're trying to make somebody happy for yourself more than for them. Because you want to see that smile on their face. Mm -hmm. So you're going into debt, buying all these gifts for people that you know, some of them you don't know, people that you like, and some of them you, don't, you can't even stand. <laughs> and then, you, then, the, then the next month you're looking at that bill and you're like, I ain't paying my tithes. I got to take care of this bill. Shame on you. You can't. Uh, I, I'm going to tell y'all, Pastor Troy does not go get himself in debt by a gift. Praise God. Amen. I, and, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be a little more even transparent. My wife and I don't buy each other gifts. Praise God. <laughs> I'm going to even be more transparent than that. Since my children have been grown, I don't buy them nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. We eat, we make merry, and we enjoy ourselves. Praise God. <laughs> I'm going down to New Jersey. Ain't nobody getting a gift. They get, the gift they're getting is me. <laughs> We're bringing some food. My wife's going to cook them some good food because my brother, my brother just in love with my wife's cooking. Most of my family is. They always get mad at me when I come by myself. Where's Todd cook? <laughs> I want some of her fried rice. What are you doing here? <laughs> you could have sent your wife and stayed home. <laughs> but we don't buy. We, we did that when the kids were younger. We buy them gifts and stuff. But, you know, my wife and I, we decided, listen, you know what? The stuff you buy me, I don't really like. The stuff I buy you, you don't really like. So let's, let's just save the, the time and money. You know, we love each other. We, we don't have to. Buy, you know, buy your own. That's right. You know, <laughs> I tell my wife, you know, you, you got the whole bank account anyway. All I'm doing is working. I don't know where the money's going. <laughs> Anything I buy, I can't surprise her because she, she always checking the books. Always checking the account. Oh, you took money out of the bank today. What you using for? <laughs> Gee whiz. cleaning lady to bless her come home I noticed you took $20 out of savings and she wins woman <laughs> but it's good she does that because it, first of all it keeps me accountable and it keeps me from spending from just going overboard and spending money praise God amen, amen. so I don't you don't get yourself in debt over stuff hallelujah amen don't be going out there and driving yourself crazy because Christmas, you, if you understand that Christmas is not all about gifts, you won't be going nuts and going to get yourself in debt and feel obligated. Amen. And just to, as a side note, please, I tell y'all this every year, don't be giving me no Hallmark cards. <laughs> oh my give, unless, uh, thank you. Give me, the only way I want to I'll take a card from you is you put some money in <laughs> If I read that generic Hallmark card <laughs> with your name signed on I'm just going to go. I'm just being honest with you. Praise God. You know That way you, you know you won't get your feelings hurt later. Pastor, you get that card? Yeah. And? <laughs> don't give me no Hallmark cards. And don't expect none from me. Amen. You know, some, I know some ministries, they send pictures every year of the pastor and his family on the card and wishing everybody a Merry Christmas. I'm not going to waste your time with that because y'all are just going to throw it away anyway. Yeah. Who 
Ooh, that's a nice picture of, of, of our pastor. Bye-bye. <laughs> you want to see pictures of me? Just go on Facebook. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll put some pictures up of me and, and when I was younger or, or current or whatever, praise God. Mm -hmm. All right. Sixth lie. Y'all ready for the sixth lie? Amen. Yeah. Amen. The Christmas tree is pagan, so we should not have one. <laughs> I can't stand spoiled sports. Praise God. <laughs> Man, I mean, some people, they so far, you know, it's, it's bad when you go into tradition, but then other people are so religious that you can't even enjoy anything. <laughs> so legalistic. <laughs> you should neither be so caught up in tradition on this side, nor should you be so legalistic on the other side that you just can't even have fun. I'm, as a Christian, you should be enjoying yourself, praise God. Amen. I'm not talking about in a sinful way. There, there's a fun you can have and, and, and a great time you can have, and even especially around Christmas, without being so daggone religious. Jesus is not religious, praise God. Amen. Jesus is holy, he's loving, he's kind, but I bet you Jesus is a lot of fun. Amen. I don't, I personally, I, I don't, the way some people picture heaven, I wouldn't want to go there. <laughs> but everything I've, I've heard and understand about heaven, I'm ready to go. Praise Amen. God. Amen. I heard it's an enjoyable place, man. You, I heard it's a place you will not be bored. Ooh. Glory to God. It's not. Yeah. It's not one of those sing on the harp, playing a harp with butt naked with wings on your back, <laughs> <laughs> or just some white robe with some aura around you. Man, I heard that place is beautiful. Amen. I heard heaven has has some. You have some good times there. There's plenty of things yeah. to do. That God that's created. God creates things that you could never imagine Amen. and enjoy. And, and He bring, and heaven is, is going to be for your enjoyment. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, we have a Christmas. Those of y'all who've been to our house last week, you saw we have a Christmas tree. Now there's some truth to the fact that the pagans did worship evergreen plants. Because they stayed green all year long, they didn't, you know, they didn't understand science back then. So they thought that it was all about um, about their, their pagan god. Hallelujah! But actually, the Christmas tree, the tradition we have of the Christmas tree, started with the um, Protestant reformer Martin Luther. And let me read this to you. It says Germany is credited with starting the Christmas tree tradition as we know it. This is from Wikipedia. We now know it in the 16th century when devout Christians brought decorated trees into their homes. Some built crisp Christmas pyramids of wood and decorated them with evergreens and candles if wood was scarce. It is a widely held belief that Martin Luther, the 16th century Protestant reformer, first added lighted candles to a tree. Walking toward his home one winter evening, Composing a sermon, he was awed by the brilliance of stars twinkling amidst evergreens. To capture the scene for his family, he erected a tree in the main room and wired its branches with lighted candles. Praise God. Amen. So the Christmas tree actually started as a Christmas, a Christian tradition. Praise God. Amen. Now, with all the fires and stuff that happened, I do not recommend candles. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. But... But, you know, it's nothing wrong with the Christmas tree. You're not bowing down to worship the thing, amen? You're not sitting there saying, oh, oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Oh, how much I worship thee. No, you're not doing that. It's just, it's just a, another piece of furniture, another decoration. Praise amen. God. That's all it is in my house. Yes. I don't even put the thing up anymore. I used to put it up every year when they were younger. I said, y'all want it up now? You put it up. <laughs> and they do. I don't care, but, now, but, but then I got mad at them last week because I said, where's the lights? <laughs> I mean, you're going to do it, do it right. Put everything on it. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But I love Christmas trees. I'm going, and unless the Lord tell me to stop doing it, I'll, put them up, I'll, I'll let them put it up every year. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with Christmas trees. Don't, do not go from one extreme to the other. Say balance. Balance. Say balance again. Balance. Praise God. Have a balance. That's why we got to deal with the lies. We got to deal with the lies on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. it. Don't go to extreme. Don't be traditional. Driving yourself crazy by getting yourself in debt. But don't go to the extreme where you can't enjoy yourself. Praise God. Amen. All right. This, here's the last one. Now, y'all, I want y'all to brace yourselves. I saved the best for last. 
Seatbelt. Well, it's the best for me anyway. <laughs> Put your seatbelt on. Seatbelt. All right, lie number seven. The pastor must preach a Christmas or... Uh, <laughs> that is a lie. Uh, uh, that is wrong, praise God. The pastor is not obligated to pre preach a Christmas message just because it's Christmas time, praise the Lord. I know his, some of y'all, y'all just expected it, you know, Easter, e Easter time or Resurrection Day, I got to have a resurrection message. Um, around, what's, the, what, what's that, um, with Jesus, the least thrown on the, Palm Sunday. <laughs> yeah, Palm Sunday, we, we y'all just, get, pastor, just better have some palms or, 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 or we leave it. <laughs> we'll never come back to this church again, pastor ain't had no palms this Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to a church where they have palms. Get the I don't care what you preach, you better have some palms on Palm Sunday. Well, no, pastor is not obligated. Hallelujah. The honor of these holidays. Amen? Amen. Pastor is, listen, while I am called to serve you as pastor, mm -hmm. I am called to serve you as directed by Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. You. And I, and I say this in love. I say this because I love you, and, and y'all my children. I'm your spiritual father. You don't get to dictate what I preach, praise God. <laughs> Amen? Amen. If, I, if I decide this is Christmas and I'm preaching on um, holiness, that's because Jesus told me to preach on holiness, praise God. Amen. And if you don't like it, well, Pastor, this is Christmas. Why, where's the Christmas <laughs> message? That's not about, you take it up to Jesus. He's your Lord just like he's mine, amen? Amen. He'll talk to you too. He'll tell, he, if you talk to Jesus and say, Lord, why didn't pastor preach a Christmas message? And the Lord will tell you because I told him not to. <laughs> and he, do, he does what I tell him to do, not what you tell him to do, amen? Amen. And he'll tell you that in love. He won't, he won't be mean to you. Amen. He won't say it the way I say, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm from the ghetto, so I just say something. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Jesus, he, put, he works with my faulty personality. <laughs> but he'll say it, he will say it to you with the deepest love. He, he's doing what I tell him to do, praise God. Amen. Now, he did tell me to preach this message, but he added that one, and I'm like, woo, I don't know if I want to say that one. <laughs> but he told me I got to say it. I, you do what I tell you to do, not what people tell you to do. Amen. Now, you know, the Lord will meet us where we're at. If, you, so, if that's what you need, God will give you that what you need. Praise God. Amen. If you need a Palm Sunday message, God will meet you where you're at. But God expects you to grow up sometime. Amen. I don't remember my pastor ever preaching how, I mean, not my last pastor, the pastor before when I was in Japan. I don't think he ever preached a holiday message. I think one time he talked a little bit about um, Christmas and did the little thing that I, I copied off of him where I asked y'all certain questions about um, the three wise men, or whether there was three wise men. He did, he did stuff like that, used to make us laugh, because every year some of the same people will forget. <laughs> y'all smart, y'all learn, learn to remember. But, um, but the truth is, that he, he, if God gave him a series to preach on, that's what he would, whether it's Christmas time, whether it's Resurrection Day, he would preach that message, praise God. Amen. And, and, and you didn't question my pastor. <laughs> But um, the thing is, is that it's not obligated, the pastor is not obligated to preach holiday messages. Matter of fact, you know, when we first started this church, I used to have Pastor Chris do all the holiday messages when he was, when he was our, my associate pastor. I tell him, man, you do the holiday messages. I can't stand holiday messages. But after um, you know, the, he was led to go to another um, ch um, church and become senior pastor, it's like I was stuck with this. <laughs> I try to get Pastor Steve and Pastor Mary to preach it sometimes, but, uh, but the day the Lord told me to do it, praise God. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that we need to understand that Christmas, Resurrection Day, any of those days, are not the church is not necessarily obligated to honor just because it's that day. And mothers, while I don't foresee us not honoring Mother's Day, it's not obligated. Amen? Amen. 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 And we may, uh, well, you know, your mothers, you deserve to be honored. Praise God. You. Your mothers do some, y'all do some really tough stuff. It, I, I couldn't be a woman. I would make a bad woman. Praise God. Because y'all work hard. 
Y'all, most of you, some of y'all work full-time jobs, and you still come home and take care of the kids. And you still do the housework and, and cooking and stuff, and us men, we come home from work, and we just like, I'm done. <laughs> women, women, y'all, y'all deserve the honor, praise God. Amen. But what I'm trying to tell you is that there's nothing in the Bible that obligates me to have to preach a Mother's Day message on Mother's Day or even have um, something centered around, have a message centered around Mother's Day, praise the Lord. If the Lord is telling me to teach on intercessory prayer and it happens to fall on Mother's Day, guess what's going to be taught? And uh, th Thank you. Now somebody get mad and say, well, you know, Pastor, don't, he don't believe in mothers. Yes, I do. I believe in mothers. I believe in y'all. Praise God. Amen. I don't, but I don't know. But, but listen, I don't even have to honor mothers on Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. We could do it any time. We could, we could honor, we could have mothers, we could have our own Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Let's break some tradition sometimes and say, March, next week in March is Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have Pastor's anniversary in October. Honor your pastor anytime, praise God. You don't have to have Father's Day in June. You don't have to have Resurrection Day in April. You don't have to have Christmas in December. You can honor these days anytime. Hallelujah. Amen. And pastor, you should you should not put pressure on your pastor. Well, I'm just saying that generically because pastor ain't gonna pay attention to any pressure y'all trying to put on me, praise God. But um, you should not put a pressure on any pastor to do something that he was not necessarily directed by the Lord to do. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. Amen.